Hi, welcome to our installation video. How do you install Arc Linux? That's the topic of this video. Well, first you boot up, whether it be in VirtualBox or NSD, SSD is better. Um, the thing is, um, Arc Linux is tweaked to work wonderfully in VirtualBox. So that's the best way to experience it. If you set everything right, I mean then the resolution, the graphical driver and all that, you get a full screen, in my case, 1920 on 1080. If you have a small screen, you know you did something wrong in the virtual box settings. All right, um, I always press this button here, so you see and we see later on, at that point in time, we were at version 3.2.17.1. Calamaris is from, uh, not from us, but it's a GitHub, a special project, and it's for all Linux systems to be able to install their uh, system on an SSD and hard disk. So github.com slash calamaris with a C. We can choose our language. We can go to Indonesian, like for instance this, and any choice will reflect later on in your uh, system. I prefer to keep it in English, but um, it all depends what you're going to install because we have 35 ISOs and Arch Linux as such has XFCE and XFCE has all languages translated. So that's great. Mate, Cinnamon, uh, Plasma, all the general desktops have all the languages translated. I'm gonna keep for English, go do not change that. Um, then we get something new, a new screen. Maybe if you installed prior, then you see what's all this. Let me explain this a little bit. So first off, you have to think about the a kind of time line. At some point in time, we make an ISO. And if you make an ISO, everything is frozen in time, which means the Linux kernel is frozen in time. I'm going to show you my Linux screen, my other screen here. This is my Plasma, my currently uh, what I'm working on, and it has 5.4.8. This what one has 5.4.6. So if you want to boot up with 5.4.6, because you know that's not giving you any issues, you don't do anything. You just don't push this button. Because this button is going to get the 5.4 point, what was it, eight? Yes, and arch one as well in the end. So this one is going to get the very, very last Linux kernel from the internet. Yes, you heard it right, from the internet. So that means you need to have network connection, cable, LAN cable, or anything like it, or a wireless connection, but wireless connections often can have a problem. You go to NM2E then, NM2E, well, I am still in QWERTY. NM2E can help you log or, or log in to your home uh, network. Go and have a look at the articles we have on Arch Linux websites. So I want to have the very last Linux kernel. Let's assume I want. That's one option. Second option could be that I'm going to install Linux LTS because I know my laptop, my desktop needs the LTS kernel. And we're talking about just the options. Let's first get my keyboards in like this. We're just taking a look at all the things that Arch Linux has to offer. If you type in Linux and then tap tap, we can't do it right now. Let's first fill in our database. And when it's filled in, then we can have a look what's available. So all the Linux stuff and the Linux LTS does exist, right? It's a name, it's the long term support kernel and you can choose it. So if you want to have it, you can choose it. But these two guys are without any NVIDIA. Because NVIDIA needs to have, an, an, well, they need to match. They all need to match together. You see these, these four? If you want to have NVIDIA with a Linux kernel, you need to have these four. But you have a an, an laptop with NVIDIA and you need to have LTS, you actually need to have Linux LTS, but NVIDIA LTS as well. You see? So that's why we've made these lines. And whether you need NVIDIA or 390, that's something you actually need to look up. Or, of course, trial and error will work as well. 
if it boots up it's fine remember the name you need so 390 has also a special kind of package and if you want to have Linux LTS again you use Linux LTS with 390xx LTS so it all matters what packages what pieces of the puzzle what Lego blocks you install then we have the Intel U code so if you have it's all about the CPU not the GPU very important the CPU you can add this code to your system and it's gonna be in your slash boot folder the same applies for AMD CPUs you can either choose one of them so I have an Intel machine I use this one I have an AMD CPU so I'm using this one now nevertheless I've uh, instructed Calamaris if you do it like this I've instructed Calamaris to tell if you run an Intel U code if you have an Intel CPU delete AMD CPU if it's there if you have an AMD you, if you have an AMD CPU and you install both of them, well, Intel U code will be uninstalled. So no matter what you click, it will be uh, fixed. So you can keep it like this, but I hope you know what CPU you have, you select it. Then in LibreOffice, we can actually install, remember if you have internet, it's all if you have internet, you can install the LibreOffice stills or a more stable branch and a more advanced branch, a feature branch, they call it. So either this one or that one. If you select them both, it will be the still, right? So you choose between these guys. It's often just a choice. And this is WPS Office, and you can choose that as well by just clicking here, and everything will be installed. So that's about this, um, this screen. That's a very, very important screen, and you decide what you take. Now, if you don't take anything, also important, then you get what we always got, Right, we get the Linux kernel from the ISO without any NVIDIA. We just do not install any of it. Then will be the, the plain Arch Linux installer we used to have months ago. All right, so it's just a choice. If you say, okay, let's install the very last Linux kernel. And uh, why not with WPS as well? And I have an Intel machine and that's probably the choice I'm gonna have um, on this, on many of my computers. There's just one NVIDIA I have where I can install the, which one is it? This one I can install on one of my hardware machines. Okay, for VirtualBox, that's quite enough. And then you decide where you live. At this point in time, the server of KDE is down and it's pointing to a server which is now under maintenance. No problem, you just click here or just select Europe, Brussels in the same way here. And then go for next. Well, you don't select Brussels, choose your own, of course. The system language, right. Um, you can change that as well. If you have, want to change your system locale, you can do so at this point in time. So you choose any of these guys. And the same goes for the numbers and the dates. But like I said, I just keep everything as is. I choose in the beginning and I keep it like it is. Then, next, Belgian keyboard is a must for me. So you choose your keyboard, see that it matches. You can test it here. Then next. And then there's always the, the question, dual boot, etc., etc. Or should I erase disk? My option of my first goal always is put one operating system on one hard disk. That's the easiest way, less frustration, fast, and it uh, is my way of working. Now, at this point in time, it's a virtual box, so there's nothing installed. This is like a clean SSD that you buy in a shop. You put it in, and it says there's nothing on here. Unpartitioned space, unknown portion, partition table. But if you have something, you see these lines up here, and you decide to erase the disk is a good option, or to go for no swap, so that's this. Swap no hibernate, watch what happens. You get a small place which will be some kind of like uh, more memory, call it like that. It's a swap partition. And if the system requires some more uh, space in, in his, in, during his, his processes, he's gonna write some stuff in the swap. But you can't hibernate. And with hibernate, you can actually go and then uh, put the machine, well, to hibernation. So I'm gonna keep uh, 
no swap since we're on a virtual box and I only have 20 gig I'm not gonna lose anything to the swap with hibernate which leaves me only 11.2 which would be well I think just big enough but nevertheless gonna use no swap if you have lots of memory that's okay I have 16 gigabyte 8 gigabyte to the virtual box still enough and I can work with no swap then you choose your name choose the name of the computer password you want to log in automatically without asking for passwords if you're at home great if you're it's for a laptop maybe better not use the same password for the administrator account if you want to switch around that's great I keep the same easier for me to remember and then we install the system now it sometimes happens that um, this, this um, free and great installer Calamaris is crashed at this point in time while when it's partitioning its um, hard disk it depends what you have on your machine simple as that it depends what you have but indeed if you have a clean installation like I have now there will be no issues but there is no partition it was all gray solution is simple you go to gparted and what you do is you select everything and everything and click on this uh, des delete the selected partition this this bin and then apply and that's it and then reboot and you'll have a clean installation now the other thing is if you are on a different kind of uh, Linux and you don't have this menu you say where's my gparted well it's here applications system gparted settings settings gparted and you can install it like that as well so that's only if you have an issue or if you want to do something special and want to make more partitions and stuff like that manual partitioning everything is available gparted is your tool to fix or to become or do some manual partitioning while this is working let's assume you are a completely new person to Arc Linux you definitely need to visit these two links all right let's have a look all right now bye bye this page is there to tell you in a very brief a summary why of what you should do and what to expect and all that so every month there's a release article every month there's a what's new video I've just made it and every month there's a how to stay rolling video stay on top of things um, join us on YouTube never miss a video lots of information communication goes via YouTube and it's uh, and a vast knowledge that's online it's about 1300 almost we are at this point in time Join us on YouTube, join us on Discord, on Telegram, but there are more things than that. Oop, I clicked. There are more things like um, forum, Facebook group, Facebook page, Instagram, maybe. Um, and of course, we explain you what Arc Linux really is. What is this project? What is Arc Linux, right? So there are different ISOs available, 35 at this point in time. But what is all this? and what is Arch Linux based on, Arch Linux of course and we have something maybe that other distros don't have we have some kind of learning path it seems so we want you to grow to become a Linux master and it, and it can be done if you just stick around long enough of course and watch videos and um, use Arch Linux right the next link is the fast track link this is what's um, gonna be a, a concentrated pill of knowledge. That's what we want to, um, to, that's the goal of this page. If you are thinking about installing, then here is everything about the pre-installation, checking ISO for errors, writing an ISO to USB. It's all so documented on all kinds of, of uh, tutorials, so many tutorials about BIOS and UFI and so on. It's all here, okay? And then everything about installation, 
what to know about installation, maybe you want a dual boot, encrypting, installing, where to get help, what to do after the installation, things to do after clean install. So a lot of information is, is in here and it's pointing to all kinds of articles because we have many websites to go to. If you have six faces, you need to have a place to put them. So that's why we organize ourselves into websites. Pacman, Pacman is of course very important. That's our package manager. It manages everything that we do. So it's a big chunk of information there. And Pamic is a more graphical thing. And we have our AOR helpers to help us install stuff not coming from Arch, but from AOR. That's something else. So if something is missing, you say, and I'll do, I have, will have the reflex myself. If something is missing, it's gonna come on here. This needs to become the one page you go to and find all the solution for. That would be great. In the meantime, voila, thought so. It's finished. And reboot. I've asked for the last Linux version. So let's have a look. Control T. 5.4.8, control T, and this is the one for Plasma, 5.4.8. So yes, we have the very last Linux kernel installed. Uh, we don't do else, I installed WPS, that's for sure, right? Office as well. Didn't install LibreOffice, not here. And then there is one more, I think I have also added to my system and that's the Intel U-code image. And that's, uh, that's that, we have installed everything and here comes Pamac telling me, hey, you have some updates. Now, you can use the Pamac updater. I have no problem with that, it will just work. Apply, done. But it's also interesting not to use Pamac and use the terminal because when you type update, you kind of, well, I don't know, I like all the things coming by, but I also like to see, look, there is something new in here. Arc Linux is sending me something. Arc Linux is sending me a wallpaper. Mm -hmm. But all other kinds of things as well, like maybe a new Linux kernel, who knows? Is there the word Linux in there somewhere? No. Then I should not reboot. Is there a systemd in there? Mm -hmm. No. Then I should not reboot. So all these kind of reflexes are great. But it's also interesting to watch it go by, for instance, and look at uh, the speed. It's something I do as well. And change my mirror if this, the speed is not enough, not fast enough to my liking. There are aliases, and please do check all the aliases we have. We have so many. And mirror or mirror A or mirror S. So there are lots of, lots of mirror things. So a command to actually make sure you have the fastest Arch Linux server. So the size, the, the speed that's in here, the speed that's in here, this speed, if that's not fast enough, you try one of these guys, the mirror guys. Okay, <clears throat> in the meantime, it's installed, fine. So let's ha have a look, nevertheless, if there are any messages. Yes, there is a message telling me something has been written to Scal, bin, Scal config, Scal config, so things have been written inside Scal. Now, as long as they stay there, they will not be applied. So what you need to do is actually apply these new settings. And the easiest way is by typing Scal. Then you have applied your settings. The second thing I'll do is I will do a copy bash CB, check out the aliases, what it is. It's gonna check if there is something new inside the bash or C. That's a file you need to know. It's a hidden file, Control H. It's here. So these two guys should be exactly the same. Compare. Files are identical. Great. That's because CB did it. The last thing I'll do is update everything from AOR. If you do it like this, you see the differences between Arch Linux, Arch Linux, that's update and the difference between uh, AOR. And you see, see in the, you see already the word PAMAC AOR, but in front of it, you'll see it as well. This is not coming from Arch Linux. It's not coming from Arch Linux. It's coming from AUR, Arch User Repository. And this thing, well, gets built. 
that's it. Control T, and we're up to date. We have now version 20.1.4. All right, I just pause it a little bit so you see everything is now installed. And this is your up all. We're up to date and you can tweak your system any way you see fit now. And um, this is the installation video of Arc Linux.